I want to start by telling you about my family farm. In West Nashville, West End Avenue separates into Highway 70 and Highway 100. If you drive out 100 for about 30 miles, you come to Bonacqua Junction. This is Hickman County. Population less than 25,000. What is remarkable about Hickman is it's so close to Nashville, but it feels incredibly remote. Hickman County has some wonderful place names. Places like Bucksnort, Little Lot, Furnace, and my all-time favorites, Spot and Only. At Bonacqua Junction, a right turn leads to Bonacqua, and this place is named for freshwater springs. When singer Johnny Cash wanted a truly isolated home place, a place where he could get away from it all, he chose Bonacqua. His cabin was near my grandfather's farm. That farm was small, but it did provide a basic living. My grandparents grew sugar cane and corn. They sold molasses and tomatoes. They raised hogs and chickens. As a child, I remember reading comic books under a big shade tree. I walked down to the general store for Cracker Jacks. If I had a dime, I could buy a Coke, too. I drew water from the cistern, and I gathered eggs from the hen house, and I'm not sure why they let me do that. I took naps in the feather bed, and I fell asleep listening to the old folks tell stories. This farm meant much to my dad, and it was tragic for him to sell it. But he needed to pay for my grandmother's medical bills. As recently as the 1990s, my brother and I and our dad drove to Bon Aqua. We wanted to check out the barn that he and my grandfather had built during the Great Depression. That barn was later torn down. The old farm is gone now, and something deeply personal is missing. But there's another story about another farm. In fact, God told Jeremiah to buy back his family farm. He said, make plans. Reclaim it. Pass it along to your children and grandchildren. At the time, this word from the Lord did not make any sense. You see, real estate values had collapsed. God's people did not control their own land. It was controlled by the Babylonian army. People were being taken into slavery, and they were literally starving to death. Soon the invaders would set fire to Jerusalem. Talking to God, Jeremiah was almost beside himself. And we can hear the emotion rising in his voice. Yet, Sovereign Lord, you are the one who ordered me to buy the field in the presence of witnesses, even though the city is about to be captured by the Babylonians. So God had told Jeremiah what to do, but that seemed impossible. The back story is that Jeremiah could not ask his friend in the real estate business to show him the property. Jeremiah was in jail. He'd been telling the truth about what would happen, and the Jewish king did not like bad news. So Jeremiah landed in jail. But there in prison, he had a dream. In this dream, his uncle came to him and said, Buy this field in the territory of Benjamin because you are my nearest relative and you have the right to buy it for yourself. So Jeremiah gave his uncle the money. He bought the land. He signed two deeds. Then he prayed to God. And this is his prayer from Jeremiah chapter 32. Sovereign Lord, you made the earth and the sky by your great power and might. Nothing is too difficult for you. You have shown constant love to thousands, but you also punish people for the, for the sins of their parents. You are a great and powerful God. You are the Lord Almighty. You make wise plans and do mighty things. You see everything that people do. Long ago, you performed miracles and wonders in Egypt, and you have continued to perform them to this day, both in Israel and among all the nations, so that you are now known everywhere. You gave your people this rich and fertile land as you had promised. 
But when they came into this land and took possession of it, they did not obey your commands or live according to your teaching. The Babylonians have built siege mounds around the city to capture it. And they are attacking. War, starvation, and disease will make the city fall into their hands. Yet, Sovereign Lord, you are the one who ordered me to buy the field in the presence of witnesses, even though the city is about to be captured. So he saw these problems. He saw war torturing and killing people, separating families, making slaves. The second problem he saw was starvation, drought, pestilence, crop failure, malnutrition, famine. The third problem he saw was disease, and these are just a few mentioned in Scripture. Fevers, blood disorders, digestion issues, leprosy, plagues. But, the God we worship can overcome all of this stuff. He's not intimidated. With him, anything is possible. And let's remember, he always keeps his promises. This is his promise to Jeremiah. The Lord Almighty, the God of Israel, has said that houses and fields and vineyards will again be bought in this land. Deeds will be signed, sealed, and witnessed. I will restore the people to their land. I, the Lord, have spoken. That's the message for right now until we meet again. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace.